John. Look both ways before crossing the studio. Okay. Ah! What? I don't understand. Okay. Ah. Ah. Okay. Here goes nothing. to the so-and-so show. Happy February. Did you say February? Yeah. I know there's an R there, but most people don't pronounce it. Oh, well, most people are wrong. Yeah, yeah, you pronounce the R because in February, you always make a good <gasps> roo. Mm. Oh. Actually, the extra mm. R comes from the original Roman calendar when it was called Februarius. But most people don't pronounce the first R because it produces a cluster of consonants that isn't commonly used in modern English. Well, some of us Febru do. Also, a roux <laughs> is something used in cooking to thicken cream sauces or gravy for those mm -hmm. of you that don't. You know what? Why are we even talking about this? Because it's February. Oh, and I'm making a bowl of fruit loops. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. That's gonna be tasty. Sticks to your ribs. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> You're not gonna eat that, are you? Absolutely. <laughs> Did someone say menace? Oh, Melinda Manners, I'm so glad that you're here. <laughs> Happy to be here. I go wherever the wind or the charge of my electric bicycle takes me. Oh, well, for those of you who haven't met Melinda, she's an expert on all things proper and mannerly. Indeed. Yes, now tell Brandon the proper way to pronounce the month we are currently in. Ah, the proper pronunciation for the second month of the year is February. I know that. Because I of... Not that. Let's see. It's just looking for these. Oh. Um, oh. <laughs> How did this get in there? That's hilarious. Okay. Oh. Oh. Rue. That is not why. People... They were going to call the month February gravy, but cooler heads prevailed. <laughs> I, I think this show has run a bit off course. Oh well. When you don't know which way to turn, look for the sign to allay your concern. A sign? Of course. When you are lost or off course, there are often signs to help point you in the right direction. You mean like road signs? I usually don't pay any attention to those. Oh, oh, you mustn't do that. Oh, no, 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 no! No? No. Without road signs, how would one know the rules of the road? No. Rules are there for us to follow when you run, when you drive, or when you eat a marshmallow. What are the rules for eating a marshmallow? Let's play a game. Oh, look over there. What? <laughs> Voila! <laughs> Wow! Amazing! This game is called Name the Road Sign. Oh, awesome! Oh, really? Road signs will be displayed on the video monitor, and you will take turns to see how many signs you can identify. Uh -huh. John will go first. Great! Sprint. And start! Okay, uh, uh, stop sign. Yield sign. Railroad crossing. No left turn. Pedestrian crossing. School zone. Narrow bridge. Merge! <sighs> Construction zone, bicycle crossing, divided highway, low clearance, one way, T 
T intersection. No U turn. Oh! What? Excellent work, John. <laughs> you certainly know how to respect the rules Thanks. of the road. Yes, yes. Fifteen points. Yes. Brandon and go. Okay. Um, uh, look in all directions. Um, no. Um. Uh, oh, whirlpool ahead. Uh, uh, broken circle. Uh, uh, circle. Traffic circle. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, look both ways before you cross the street. Um, uh, parallel lines. Oh, no. No, uh, parallel parking. Uh, both ways when you. Oh, two way traffic. Ah. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. H. The letter H. Halt. It, it's, like a, it, it's, a, it's like a stop sign, but it's a halt sign. Halt. No. Um, okay, uh, 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 helicopter landing pad with a helicopter H is a hiya, hello, howdy do, stranger. Welcome to our town. It's Time is up. That was, of course, hospital. And a bonus point for John. That's no fair. His were way easier. No. Very well. Let's do another round. This time oh. you will both be allowed to answer at once. Yes. And begin. Okay. Spaghetti oh. Junction. Uh, only drive in reverse. Oh, no, no, mm -hmm. that, Oh, steep clip. Oh, Use oh, caution. Wow. Uh, oh, look out. Low flying well, airplane. Oh, that's it. That, Alpaca that. crossing. Llama crossing. Oh, uh, Unicorn crossing. Uh, the, the one with the. Camel uh, crossing. No, no, oh, still with the one No with right the... turn of driving a camel. Warning! Oh. Killer mosquitoes! Oh, Chickens I... playing chicken! <laughs> and one more! Wait! I know this one. It's, 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 it's man in an orange circle. Oh. Awesome hair alert. Uh, 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 silhouettes waving. I am not good at this. It is, of course. It's Bible story Bible time. Bible story time with Kelly. Kellen, what's up, friend? Not much. How's it going over there? Yeah, uh, pretty swell. You got a Bible story for us today? I do indeed. And we'll be telling it today with Laundry Theater. Our story comes from the book of Luke. Luke wrote about Jesus when he started healing people and teaching them. People were starting to follow Jesus and listen to his ideas about God and how we should live in the world. One day, Jesus had been teaching people from a boat that belonged to a fisherman named Simon Peter. Jesus was sitting down in the boat while he taught people on shore. After he had finished speaking, Jesus told Peter to take the boat out into deep water and put his nets down to catch some fish. Peter told Jesus that they had been fishing all night and hadn't caught a thing. But because Jesus had asked him to, he would. Even though Peter probably doubted that they would catch any fish at all, he had great respect for Jesus and his teaching. And because of that, he was willing to do what Jesus asked. After Peter and his fellow fishermen went out to the deep water, they put down their nets and they caught a massive amount of fish. It was so large, the nets began to break. The catch was so big, Peter had to have another boat come and help take some of the fish. There were so many fish, the boats began to sink. When Peter saw how many fish they had caught, he was amazed. He dropped to his knees, he was scared, he told Jesus to go away. He didn't feel good enough to be around someone so amazing. But Jesus told Peter not to be afraid and that from now on, instead of fishing for fish, Peter would fish for people. Simon Peter left everything behind to follow Jesus. Two other men, James and John, also saw what had happened that day and they decided to follow Jesus too. These were ordinary guys, fishermen. They weren't rich or powerful, probably didn't feel like they belonged, but Jesus was going to use them to change the world. And not long after that, Jesus met someone else, a tax collector named Levi, who was more commonly known as Matthew. Now, back then, tax collectors were generally not liked by people. But when Jesus saw Matthew, Jesus told him to follow him. And Matthew immediately got up and left everything and followed Jesus. Then, 
Matthew threw Jesus a banquet or a party. And there were other people there, other tax collectors. And some of the religious leaders were not too happy about that. They complained and asked why Jesus would eat with tax collectors and sinners. Well, Jesus told them that it is not the healthy that need a doctor, but the sick. Jesus wasn't looking for the people who thought they were right with God to follow him. He was looking for those who needed help. The end. Great story, Kellen. Yeah, it's pretty cool to read and think about Jesus finding his first disciples like Peter and Matthew, who become an incredible part of the story of Jesus and the work that he did. Yeah, and the disciples weren't super extraordinary people either. At first glance, no. Some of them were just ordinary fishermen, people that may have felt left out or at least felt like they weren't important, or people like Matthew that others really didn't like. Matthew probably felt like an outsider, but Jesus was able to look beyond what everyone else saw, and he was able to use people that may have felt left out to change the world. Thanks a lot, Kellen. No problem. I'll see you guys next time. You know, I'm so glad that Jesus includes imperfect people because I'm way imperfect. Yeah, no kidding, me too. Jesus always included people who were left out. Absolutely. Oh, in fact, reveal the question. Oh, when have you felt left out? Uh, maybe you didn't get invited to a friend's sleepover, but mm. all of your other friends did. Yeah, or maybe you like different things than some of the people you go to church with. Uh, maybe people like to play games that you're not good at, like uh, name the road sign. Oh, oh, did you not like that game? I barely got any of them right. Uh, well, yeah, I did notice that. <laughs> hey, you know what, next time you get to pick the game. Thank you, John. No problem. If you ever feel left out, tell someone. Find someone you trust and, and tell them what you're feeling. And maybe they can help. Mm. It's easy to feel left out. But remember, there are people in your life who care for you. And there's a God that created the whole world who cares for you too. Oh, and be on the lookout for others who might feel left out. Mm -hmm. You can be like Jesus to them by including them and showing them God's love. So true. <laughs> what? True. True. Taru. Get it? What I'm saying? Why are you saying it like because that? Because of the Ru earlier. You, you know, February. Ru. Yeah, well, that's all the time we have today, but we'll see you next time on the So and So Show. Remember the Ru at the beginning of the show? We had You had the Ru out, and you kept, we argued about February. Ru. I feel left out. Push my spoon away, away from, from me. me. Yes, and now enjoy oh. uh, what do you call an Australian roo what? made by a kangaroo? What? A roo-roo. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, yes. No.